Hello, Internet! So nice to see you! I've published a free new ebook on how to sound great with just five notes. You can check it out at this link. And now, your questions. I wasn't sure where or how to get this message to, so I chose this video. I just wanted to say how fantastic that symposium was on January 21st, 2022. I had about three hours sleep the night before and almost changed my mind when my alarm went off. Quick pep talk and I logged in early. I stayed for every minute. It was awesome. Thanks for being a part of it. And thank you for coming. And if you guys are wondering what is this all about, we had this guitar summit. It was an online event, free. It went on for nearly eight hours, I think, uh, with different people presenting uh, various guitar masterclasses and tricks and ideas, etc. And we had a lot of fun. And if you guys want to be in the loop for those events, there are going to be more. I do recommend going on my website and subscribing to the mailing list because some of them I do not. Uh, announce them on YouTube. There are reasons for that, uh, but just go there, go, get on my mailing list, so you're, you're sure you're gonna get all the announcements for those events, and several of them are completely, absolutely free, so you can do them. No string attached. Well, okay, the string attached on your guitar, sure. Yeah. Terrible, terrible joke. Okay, but you can go there, and you're gonna get all those announcements, and you're not gonna miss every, any single one of them. My finger has its own brain. It's moving like tentacles of Dr. Octopus. Well, we are in the same boat. When I was starting, my hand had a brain on its own. Practically most of people when they start have this, whether they realize it or not. If anything, you're in a good situation because you do realize it. Several beginners don't realize that their hands are doing whatever they want and they cannot control them yet. It's a good start. Now, what do we do for that? The idea is, Whatever you're playing, chords, scales, whatever, I want you to slow down and relax because we need to take back the control of your hands. So how do you do it? Let's say you want to play, I don't know, a little fragment of a scale, okay? I'm gonna play a, maybe this part of the pentatonic. Okay, Not, nothing super complex, but the idea is you are gonna start to play slow. Okay, and I know it's a pain to play things slow, okay? And the idea is you play this, you start playing this, and at a certain point you just stop, okay? So you just do this. And you stop. Freeze. Don't do anything. Don't, don't take the hands away from the guitar. Just... And look at your hands and see where they are, see what they're doing, okay? See if they're in a strange position. If they're in a strange position, just correct the position. And most likely you're gonna find that your hands have a lot of tension in them. So what do you do? You take your hands and you relax, then you shake them this, in this ridiculous way that I'm doing right now in World Vision, in this YouTube channel, so everybody can take this clip and make a funny video about me. Okay, so just shake your hands and come back, freeze again, make sure there is no tension, take the tension away, and you keep doing this way. So you just simply play, freeze, observe what's happening and relax your hands. Play again, freeze, observe what's happening, and come back again. And what you're doing here is that you're giving your brain an occasion to reconnect with your hand every time you stop. Now, when you do this kind of practice, for the first 10 minutes, nothing happens. It looks like you are doing something that has no effect, okay? The second or third day, you're gonna start to notice something magical. You're gonna start that you are actually reconnecting with your hand. You are actually controlling your hand. Okay, so again, nothing happens at the beginning, but then it happens, okay? And then you start to get this new awareness of your hand. And then you don't need to do this exercise anymore, okay? Or if you need it later in the future, you can still do it, but it's not that you have to do this forever, okay? You do this, get control of your hand, and then you can keep going with whatever else you were doing. And it's totally worth doing this exercise, even if it looks like you're doing nothing, because it helps you playing whatever you want to play. Practice with a goal and don't forget to enjoy playing. Time is gold and let's not waste it. Yes, exactly. This guy gets it. It's not, it's, it has never been that we have to clear the 10,000 hours or whatever milestone and all this kind of thing. It's always being about enjoying the music. So play your guitar, learn some music theory, write some new music or play music written by other people, have fun, do what you like with the guitar, and then if you need help doing what you like, I'm here, other, you can find other people, the internet is big, okay? You can find exactly the person you need that can teach you and help you doing exactly whatever you want to do. 
but forget about clearing 10,000 hours or all this kind of thing. Just have fun with your instrument. Otherwise, what's the point? The whole point of playing this is because it's fun. So let's not forget, this is fun. Maestro, I love your lessons at Approach. However, I cannot imagine anyone knowing hundreds of licks and not being able to use them. First, we can only play what we practice, yes, no? Second then, if we learn to practice something and it doesn't fit into our style or taste, why would anyone continue? Everything we experiment with either fits us or we let it go. I've bought books of licks, videos, or magazines and found one or two gold nuggets that I've incorporated into my style, and I know you might have too. You know what, I was thinking exactly like you when I started, I'm thinking, because, because it works for me too, in a sense, okay? I can go, I can study a solo, I can take a few leaks, I can steal the leaks, okay? And then I can build a new solo for myself, and the more I do it, the more I learn. But I found that actually, uh, to my surprise, for the vast majority of people, this does actually, actually does not work. If they learn a leak, they will just repeat the leak, and then it's hard for them to, to modify the leak to their own... Um, for, the, for their own solos and all this kind of thing. So I think we need to attack the problem in, in, in several different ways. The first one is, uh, let's reduce the amount of leak we learn and let's increase how well we learn those leaks. Because if you notice, several great players don't really know thousands of leaks. They know a few leaks and a few tricks, but for every leak they know, they know a thousand ways of playing that leak, a thousand different ways of playing that leaks. So they really know those leaks in depth. And the skill that they use there, it's not memory in the sense of learning leaks. The skill they use there is they have this uncanny ability of creating variations and variations and variations and variations over the simplest thing, okay? Kind of like if you want in pop songs have all the same chord progression but all the melodies are slightly different so you can recognize them. Great guitar players use a similar kind of skill where they always play the same things, but always in a slightly different way. And I'm not saying this to diss anybody, I think it's a great ability, okay? An ability worth to be studied, worth to be learned, okay? And so, um, that's why I don't like Book of Leaks, because they show you one leak played in one way. If somebody produced a Book of Leaks where they show you one leak played in a thousand ways, I would probably love that book, but I don't think it exists, okay? What I do for my part is that I made a series of videos that, that have been published on this YouTube channel right now on uh, how to change leaks, on how to modify the leaks. Uh, sometimes we exchange a few notes, sometimes we change the timing, sometimes we change other things, so that you can learn one leak and create several, several thousands of variations of that leak, okay? Um, I think this is a better skill, and when I try this with my student, I see that they play better if we train together this way, rather than just learning leaks. Now, of course, some people can, can learn leaks and naturally come up with variation. Great, you have this skill, then you can study other skills, no problem. Um, but again, I think in this situation, um, it's the minority of people that have this kind of skill naturally, and most people actually need to uh, train it, okay? And that's why some people say, I have no creativity, and it's not true. You just need to train this specific skill, and you'll see that you can be as creative as you want. Yes, I've been practicing guitar exercises for about 10 minutes a day for the last four years, and my playing has improved a lot. It's true, consistency is key. I was talking with one of my students the other day, and he told me that he was practicing a specific scale for 10 minutes a day, a day for five days and they've seen a massive improvement. And uh, if you think about it, it's an investment of less than an hour, okay, 50 minutes. Uh, 10 minutes a day for five days for a massive improvement. He, he, he was telling me that his hands feel more relaxed and it's still not perfect, it's still not perfect in time, but the hands feel more relaxed, it's much easier to play, the speed increases a little bit. The thing is this, is when you practice at the beginning, nothing seems to happen and this discourages most people. But if you can just stick to it for a little bit and be consistent, you are going to see results. And you're going to see results really fast, okay? If you're not seeing results, it's because you may not be practicing the right way. In this case, I would consider asking help. Ask me, ask some, some other people. A great person to ask for this is Mike Filipov at practiceguitarnow.com. It is quality time you spend with your instrument to get better at this. And that's true for everything on guitar. It's true for technique. It's true for theory. Some of the theory right now 
that, that, that you can see in this channel right now may look very abstract or complex to you, but if you are consistent in studying the basics of theory, you see that this is going to be easy in a very short amount of time. And then you are going to wonder, like many other students have told me, they're going to wonder what was difficult about this in the first place. I'll tell you what was difficult. It was unfamiliar. You, didn't, you were not used to thinking in that way. But then you learn this new way of thinking and everything becomes easy. So, yes, consistency is key. And you can learn literally whatever you want on this instrument and in music.